Guys, I have a super exciting news. I am starting a vegetable garden. Okay, let's keep it cool. I have been dreaming of growing my own vegetables for many years now and it's finally happening. I wanted something easy to maintain, not too big, and I figured raised garden beds are the best option for me. So I found some inspirational pictures online called my trusted carpenter, Mr. Jose. And one month later, which was yesterday, he delivered the first raised garden bed. He's still finishing the second one, which I'll get next week. So all together, I'm gonna have two veggie beds like this one. Now our wooden structure is ready, but there are a few steps that will make this baby a bit more sturdy and resistant to all weather conditions. I've done a lot of research on what is the best way to make a raised garden bed and this is how I decided to do it. Now I am gonna say this thing looks way bigger than I first imagined. Two and a half meters long, 120 wide and one meter deep. However, 10 to 20 centimeters will go into the ground so it won't be as overwhelming. Tenny told me that she will help me grow the veggies, right? She agrees. Tenny's just doing some quality control. How does it look, Tenny? Everything fine? I think so. Guys, you know how I always say, whenever I start filming, people around me start doing this. Yeah, my neighbor definitely started working on his land right now. It is the perfect opportunity for us to grab some breakfast. I got changed because we're now gonna do some painting. My little helper is obviously right there by my side. Sometimes I feel like she's more like a dog. Whenever I go outside, she follows. Even when she's very tired, she still wants to go with me. First, I'm applying three coats of wood protector. It makes the wood more resistant against sun, rain and wind, which will make sure that our garden beds will last us many years. We've just finished applying three coats of wood protector and then it started raining. But we've gotten this beautiful rainbow, so no hard feelings. Since 10 to 20 centimeters of the wood at the bottom will go under the ground in the soil, we need to protect that part even better. So I decided to use this marine paint, which is made for boats. I'm thinking if it's good enough for boats, sea, sun, salt, these are some rough conditions, then it must be good enough for me too. The garden has been showing off in all of its beauty these days. The colors are just so vibrant and there's so much life everywhere you look. The bumblebees, the birds. I wake up pretty early and since I work from home, I have the privilege to take the first minutes of my day very slowly. Usually after waking, I stay in bed for a little while and a lot of times I hear the sound of the first bird that starts chirping. Right after, other birds join. It's such a beautiful moment going from complete silence to all of a sudden hearing so much life outside i am so excited you guys i feel like having a hobby that you really enjoy that is spent in nature it's going to be just so valuable for me i can't wait to go every day pick some veggies make a lunch out of it or dinner i think it's gonna be such a good thing for me i feel it you guys know i've been very much into healthy eating these past years and this is gonna be such an amazing upgrade i also think i'm just gonna have such a nice and exciting hobby i am so looking forward to it I cannot even tell. Having a hobby that really excites you is so important. And my hobby before was making videos, making DIYs, filming. But after a while, this has become my job. And for years, this was the only thing that I was doing. And I still love it, but I need to have something on the side just for me, just for my heart. I'm gonna take you on the ride. I'm gonna show you what is growing in my garden. We're gonna cook some things together. It is going to be so fun. There's a few interesting things going on in the garden right now. Let me show you. First of all, these hydrangea flowers, they're so big, bigger than my head. And these special sort of palm trees called seagull plants or something like that. A subscriber actually told me on Instagram and they are so interesting. This one is more open, so the leaves are becoming a bit more straight. But the one in the back, the little one, check it out. It's so cute. This little one is a bit more closed and still has leaves twisted in tiny little swirls. Isn't it absolutely gorgeous? I mean, look at this. Isn't it perfect? The nature, wow, it surprises me literally every single day. It is the most beautiful thing in the world.
Hey guys, it's a few months later since we last spoke. Last clip was filmed in April and now it's July. And July. I thought that by now I would already be harvesting my first veggies, but no, the garden beds are still empty. So why the delay? Well, May I was traveling and June, July we had two big jobs that needed to be done before proceeding with the garden beds and for that we needed to find good skilled people. Which let me tell ya, it's not easy this time of the year because everyone is super busy. First we had to cut down the branches of this tree because the poor thing was dying. So all the dry branches needed to be cut down before putting our garden beds under it. Because if we would do it after, the branches could fall on the boxes, could damage them. It is just not a great situation. Secondly, our garden is not flat. It has a bit of an incline because we are located on a hill. So we had to hire a guy with an excavator to make the area where the boxes will be flat. These blue flowers are done blooming for this year, which is a bit sad, but no worries because the season of hydration Rangers, it's coming and they are just so gorgeous. Wow, right? Every season really is beautiful. Me and my boyfriend are taking a couple of hours every day to come out here and work on our little vegetable project. Also one of the reasons why things are taking a bit more time, but we are enjoying the process and that's what matters. Next we have to dig two shallow holes to put our garden beds in them and let me tell ya, it is one hell of a job. Having a little hole digging break with my hydrangeas, they are just the best company. Sometimes I'm tired and don't really feel like going out to do this physical work. I'd rather stay in and watch some YouTube. But then I always end up feeling so great that I actually did go out and accomplish something, even if it's very small. It's like working out. You don't want to go do it, but when you're done, it feels amazing. The first hole is done. Happy about that. Now I'm going to take the bricks and place them all around the hole to act as a base for a garden bed. The first box is placed in and all ready and now we are digging up the hole number two. We were so happy when both of the holes were done and the wooden boxes placed in. It's not an easy task, let me tell you, because you also want to make sure that the boxes are leveled correctly. I've done a lot of research on how to make raised garden beds more resistant and how to keep intruders away from your produce. So to prevent rodents from stealing my veggies, we're installing a net at the bottom. Apparently, they could make a nest in the soil. Imagine them making a rodent kingdom in my garden bed and stealing all my root vegetables like carrots and beets. No, no, no. No, no, we must prevent this. Sealing the wood on the inside with the construction foil will hopefully expand the lifespan of our garden beds. It protects wood from moisture, mold and decay. We also decided to add some horizontal metal support because the big amount of soil and water that will collect inside could pressure the wooden structure to lose its shape. Whoa, I am so happy and proud of our work. Tenny also gave her word of approval so we can proceed to filling these babies up. We started by throwing in a little bit of soil just to cover the net. Here we have lots of wood we got from cutting down the tree I showed you before so we're throwing that in. With time these logs and branches will break down and enrich the soil. We started with bigger pieces of wood and continued with smaller branches, clippings and leaves. On the very top is a layer of soil that we got from a local farm. We're spending every evening here for a couple of hours and it is a really nice workout. I definitely don't feel the need to do any other hit pilates or yoga these days. At this point it's already August so we are late to sow in the veggies anyway. We might as well take it easy and enjoy the process. Having my own vegetable garden has been on my wish list for so many years. I find it hard to believe that it is actually happening. I am so ready to spend my free time here with hands in the soil. I already love gardening so much, but now I will get to eat the things that I grow, which is pretty wild. Usually my evenings are spent on the couch watching YouTube videos, but these days all my evenings are spent working on this little project and it is making me feel so relaxed and fulfilled. We have finished filling up our garden beds yesterday evening and I'm still kind of in disbelief that they are ready. It has been a long time coming. Anyway, I hope these babies will help me grow tons of veggies in the next years because let me tell you, this has been an investment. For the wood, carpenter work, the paint, the foil inside, the net, the soil. Oh, and we even had to level up the terrain with an excavator. I think we paid around 1,500 euros or even more. And that's a lot of veggies if you buy them at the farmer's market. So I need a 
lot of vegetables to get an okay return on this investment. But the spending doesn't stop here because we still need to buy all the seeds. I've been waiting for this moment for so long. I'm just gonna eat my breakfast and then we're off to the agriculture store. We're having this fig tree which is honestly looking very scarce. As you can see there's hardly any leaves on here but she has been producing a ton of figs this season. And also check out this little guy here. I mean he's kind of huge. Especially his antennas. Antennas? Antennas? I don't know. You guys I struggle with my English vocabulary and pronunciation. I feel like I'm using the same words all the time. And then I have to pronounce antennas, antennas, something I don't use regularly. I freeze. I think I'm gonna take one fig to start my breakfast. As they say, fruit first, right? Mmm, delicious. For breakfast, I'm starting off with a cup of chicken bone broth. Next, I'm having a cabbage soup. You guys know I love this thing a lot. Last part of the breakfast, this blueberry collagen smoothie. We're now gonna drive to the store and I'm already thinking what veggies do I wanna plant? Some lettuce, carrots, maybe kale, Swiss chard for sure, beetroot as well, mm, maybe parsley. I don't know, we'll see what we can find. There's so many seeds options here, I just wanna take one of each. But unfortunately, we have limited space in our garden bed, so I need to hold my horses. We're back from the store and here is my vegetable seeds haul. I managed to get almost everything organic, which is very cool. And I, as you can see, I bought a lot of stuff. I paid around 80 euros for this stuff. I'm telling you guys, this agriculture hobby is not cheap. But I really bought a lot of seeds. This will last me for several seeding rounds, so that's fine. Next, I'm gonna do a bit of research because I don't wanna just throw these seeds randomly in the garden bed. Cause you know, apparently some veggies are good neighbors and some are not such good neighbors. So we need to find out which of these veggies get along together so I can plant them close to each other and which of these are better kept apart. Right, super quickly what I got. Different kinds of lettuce, tomatoes, leeks, Swiss chard, one of the things I'm most excited about. Two different types of kale, we got celery, beetroot, super excited about those. This one is colorful which is super cool. Bok choy, arugula, colorful carrots, gorgeous, radish, spring onion, and some chicory. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Think about being able to just go outside, pick some lettuce, some radish, some tomatoes, some arugula, make a salad, eat the salad, wow, can't wait. Today is a pretty cold November day and finally I'm ready to sow my vegetables. You might think I'm out of my mind sowing veggies in November, but I live in a place where temperatures rarely drop under 12 degrees Celsius. And on a sunny day we can easily get 18 degrees in the middle of the winter. So I'm hopeful that I can harvest some produce even in January or February. It feels like just yesterday we were able to spend evenings here working in the garden and now it's not even 6 p.m. and it's almost completely dark. It's been about five weeks since we've put the seeds into the soil and look at this, so much life in the middle of December. Radish is an absolute winner, definitely growing the fastest. End of the year, I traveled to my home country to spend Christmas with the family. When I returned back in January, I was completely shocked. The garden beds were full of beautiful, luscious vegetables. Everything looking so healthy and delicious. These two wooden boxes have been giving us so much food for the past four months. Beetroot and carrots are probably my favorite. Oh, and lettuce and arugula. It is June now and I'm excited to grow more summer vegetables like tomatoes and cucumbers because nothing beats the taste of food that you actually grew yourself. 